This is a swamp, but not just any swamp. This is a deadly swamp. And over the next 30 days, life will find its way into this swamp. Some will thrive and some will perish. But with time, it transformed into one of the deadliest and forever changing ecosystems on our planet. Can life adapt to the ever changing environment? Or will the predators prove to be too deadly? To see all this, we have to go back to day one. I gathered all my supplies to start this ecosystem with loads of moss, rocks, and wood. A lot of wood. I started off by figuring out the placement of the main branch. I wanted this branch to sort of be the centerpiece of this build. Once I was happy with that, it was time to build the background. I put the vivarium on its back and began placing the cork and foaming it all into place. Now, while the foam was still sticky, I then put the sphagnum moss all over the back where there wasn't any cork. This will be a great way to keep the humidity up and provide a place for plants to grow. After everything dried, the background was finished and it looked really nice. Next, I wanted to add hardscape at the bottom. Rocks, more wood and branches give it more of a swamp feel and I even added a cave for future animals to hide in. I then added some plants to help the ecosystem get a head start. Then, after adding some sand, the ecosystem was complete. And as night fell, this is where things took a turn. Slowly, mist and fog started to roll in and above. Something big was about to happen to this not so swampy ecosystem. With the storm getting worse and the rain getting heavier, there was bound to be a surprise waiting for us in the morning. As the morning began, the fog slowly lifted away from the swamp, revealing something major in our ecosystem. Something that will change the course of this swamp. The storm had caused exactly what we wanted, a fully functional swamp. And within this water, friends came along with it. Fish. Minnows to be exact. These small but amazing fish managed to get swept into here from the storm. But that wasn't the only thing that managed to find its way into our ecosystem. Something was moving slowly on the bottom of our swamp. Snails. These tiny but hardy invertebrate must have also came in with the bad weather last night. And it was also very recent as he still not managed to grab onto something, just floating away in our ecosystem. Eventually, the snail managed to attach itself to the glass and got to work fast on cleaning any algae or dirt. This is pretty much the life of a snail. Life in the swamp was slowly moving along as expected with the snails and fish. But in the coming days, life as we know it in the swamp will change drastically. Day 15 had arrived and with a new day came new creatures that followed. This time, very bright. Shrimp had made their way into the ecosystem as well. These shrimp are amazing at cleaning up algae that the swamp will produce and they're powerhouses at cleaning any waste from other inhabitants. The cool thing about these shrimp is they're completely see-through, meaning you can see the whole of their insides. The shrimp got lazy and wanted to take a ride on the snail. I wonder what uber ring that snail has. And it looks like he's reached his destination and hopped off. And it was time to give the creatures inside a little treat, a slice of apple. This slice of apple instantly had the fish coming over and taking a bite out of it. And even a snail slowly started to make its way over in the background too. I then put the apple under a branch to stop it from floating. This piqued the curiosity of one of the snails. He started to eye up the apple to figure out where to start. Never mind, I guess he just wasn't interested and went along with his day. Day 20 in the swamp and the plants were growing out of control, with new plants in the back of the swamp growing rapidly too. With the sun setting, something else was about to join the swamp. And as night fell, the sound of crickets started to fill the swamp. Hundreds of crickets started to fill the swamp, causing damage to the plants. I needed a predator to stop them overpopulating the swamp and causing more damage. And that's exactly what happened. But something wasn't right in the swamp. The fish were swimming around looking for a place to hide. Something big was about to arrive in the swamp. As night fell, the swamp was filled with the sound of frogs. And as the fog lifted in the morning, that's exactly what entered the swamp. A toxic fire-bellied toad. And not just one, five of them. And they were looking very hungry. But one of the frogs noticed a cricket. Sorry, little guy, but you're about to be a frog's first meal of the day. 
The crickets started to panic after seeing their friends get taken down and ran away. One of the crickets even started to tease the frogs and managed to get away safely without being swallowed. Across the other end of the swamp, this cricket got a little too close for comfort and in a flash, he was gone. It looked like he enjoyed that meal. One by one, the frogs took out the crickets in the swamp. Considering the frogs took out most of the crickets, there was still one very brave cricket that decided to use a frog to make himself a hat. He wasn't really happy with that. On day 30, the swamp was complete. The perfect swamp ecosystem was made and will continue to thrive. If you enjoyed the video, let me know by liking and subscribing and let me know what ecosystem I should make next.